uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Phil Kuyum and uh, I would like to uh, first say that Happy New Year. Um, today's webinar is uh, mainly concerned with the uh, with the method how are you going to tie uh, your well in OpenDTEC by using OpenDTEC well to seismic tie module. So, uh, in throughout the webinar, what I will be doing, I will be t teaching you how to prepare and tie your synthetic seismogram. So, uh, what we support in OpenEDEC is is a, is a display that you are looking at currently. It's a, it's the same window that you are going to see throughout the webinar or the demo that I'm going to present. So, we do basic simple uh, forward modeling met method to 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 use your the available logs, and we automatically compute the reflectivity as you know it very well and uh, we create a synthetic size trace and uh, then we do a manual match by picking some synthetic time against the seismic trace and uh, matching the seismic trace with the synthetic trace. Uh, before I start presenting the, the real demo I would like to introduce you with the few things and uh, those uh, those introduction introductory things will be just a PowerPoint presentation for next 10 minutes probably. I will start with uh, a brief introduction uh, that will in the image I'm going to say uh, which data is actually required, uh, what type of wavelets do we support, can you accept any wavelet in open detect or not and um, uh, I will also briefly introduce you uh, with the buttons and the layout of the well to seismic dialog and its supported features and then I'm going to present you a uh, couple of demos uh, so that uh, you will learn uh, the method and uh, the workflow uh, nicely. Uh, initially, uh, everybody <laughs> I think is well aware of this thing. Uh, initially, you need a couple of ASCII files that uh, needed to be loaded uh, to be loaded in OpenDetect, and uh, those are like track files, file and logs, markers, and check shots of if check shot data is available. Um, in parallel, you also need to know the, the well history. So maybe, uh, you should have some notes written somewhere that where the bad logs were and uh, also the, the well location and its, its uh, seismic trace. So these are the prerequisites and you should have them somewhere uh, externally. The most important thing and the knowledge is actually the, the knowledge of seismic polarity and the phase of the data. So before you start any well tie in any software, I would say, you should have a knowledge of, of this thing. The datum information, which is a pretty confusing term in our industry, it's, it's the information for seismic reference datum and the well datum. So uh, this is the very essential information. And uh, you, somehow I will say um, you should know the the acoustic impedance vector for regional markers within a within a survey area or within an area in which you are working at. at. So like regional markers, if you are working in offshore, so it's prominent marker is always seabed, and the regional unconformity is like top Cretaceous, top permanent. There, yes, if they are present in your data interval. In OpenDetect, what do we support uh, are two wavelet types, like synthetic wavelet and statistical wavelet that you can create inside OpenDetect. So, synthetic wavelet means a recur or sync function based wavelets, or statistical wavelets means a constant wave, constant phase wavelets that you can extract using this uh, this 2D or 3D seismic data. I will show you a demo on this. By going back in Open Detect and presenting you how you are going to create a wavelet. Um, in terms of data loading, uh, you normally use well file management window uh, to load the necessary data per well. So here I I highlighted uh, the the text uh, adjacent to the button. For example, track button track button is actually used to load the track file of a well if it is a deviated file, so you need to have that file stored somewhere. The next thing I'm going to present uh, is uh, an overview to seismic to well tie window. This is the window that I presented earlier in this at the start, at the beginning. 
what you see here uh, is a display of several logs, some computed logs in the middle. And on the rightmost side, you see synthetic traces and seismic traces. Those are one. Those are actually replicated traces. So uh, this is the overall uh, uh, window that I'm going to use to tie my synthetic trace with the seismic trace. At the bottom, you see several options, and those are options which actually control the display and also which also are used to match the synthetic trace with the seismic trace. Uh, what do we support in, in this uh, module is, uh, is first of all bulk shift. For example, if you pick a synthetic time and you want to know that, okay, you want to say that okay, this pick is corresponding to this pick on seismic, so shift the entire trace, synthetic trace up, so you can do that. You can also apply multiple structure squeeze uh, to your synthetic, uh, synthetic seismogram so that you, you improve uh, your time death model locally per interval per zone and the best thing is if you have already interpreted some horizon and then later on you just loaded the seismic data also the well data and uh, then you, you would like to match these, uh, these uh, the interpreted horizon automatically with the well marker and update the time death model so this, can, this thing you can do automatically in open detail within the same module once you have prepared your synthetic seismogram, you would like to QC the quality of, of, of match. So that's, that, that's the thing that you do within the same window and uh, you just press one button to cross check the parameter and there you, you would like to change um, probably the wavelet if, it, if the match is poor and you just QC the cross correlation coefficient and the lag uh, after, after applying bulk shift or stretch or squeeze. And the last and the most important thing, once you have prepared a synthetic trace, you would like to, to, to display it as an overlay on top of your seismic. So uh, that's a very easiest thing. I will I'll show you how to do it. But before you do it, uh, you have to save it as a trace in OpenDetect. So once you have saved it as a log or seismic cube, you can display it the way I have presented it here. Okay. This was a brief introduction to, to the entire uh, synthetic to uh, seismic matching. Uh, next, I'm going to present you some live demos. So my first demo is, uh, is just an introductory thing, which is uh, about uh, the reference datum supported in OpenDetect. We do support seismic reference datum, but it is supported by well. So if, if you have a seismic reference datum defined, per, if, you, if you have knowledge of seismic reference datum, so you can the, do it directly while loading a well. <coughs> Sometimes you, you have difficulties in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in calibrating the datum. The datum. So uh, for example, this case is, is a normal case in which check shot is uh, measured directly below mean sea level. But sometimes you have a check shot which is measured based upon an SRD, so your true travel time starts to be zero at SRD. So in such case, we, there is no support for uh, for such measurement in OpenDetect. So you have to edit the, the 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 depth column by yourself and provide the right thing. What do we support is is it uh, for check shot uh, data is TBDSS and measure depth. Next, I'm going to present you a live demo in OpenDetect. Uh, what I will do, I will load a well track. It's a time depth uh, data, corresponding check shot, markers, and the log data. So let's uh, go, go to OpenDetect. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is to load a well. To load a well, I go to survey, import, wells, ASCII, and track. So from survey menu, I'm going to import, and uh, there I found well submenus, and uh, there I have a menu. So I press it. It is going to launch import well track dialog. In this dialog, you load 
each file independently by providing its corresponding file. So what I have is actually a file. So I go and I locate the file where it is. Okay. I have selected a file. I would like to see it. So I can press examine button, adjacent to well track file option. So this is my file. So X, Y, and Z, DVDSS column and mail depth. So I have four column file, which is an ASCII file, and I would like to read X, Y, all fields. So what I just need to do is define a format definition. There was a text header on top. I don't want to read from that point. I want to read from second row. So I put the header size 1 with a fixed size. Format definition, I'm going to press define. Um, uh, the file contains X and Y information in column 1 and column 2, that's right. The Z information is uh, Z here refers to uh, TVDSS, so Z information is column number 3, that's correct, and its units are meters, that's also correct in my case, and mail depth is column number 4. I press OK. So up till now, I just have defined, I have selected the file and I have defined its format. Next thing is depth to time model. Do I have time depth curve model existing, pre-existing thing? Yes, I do have. So I, I press select and I browse the file and I do the same thing. I would like to see this check shot file examine. So column one is mail depth, column two is true travel time, first row it's, it's just a, a text thing. I don't want to read it, so I, I do the same thing. Format definition, I press define. Mail depth is column one, two bit travel time, column two. The units of true travel time were milliseconds in my case, that's good. Mail depth is meter, that's also good. I press OK. And next thing is at the bottom, it says, is this check short data? Uh, yes, it is a check short data. And I press yes. And if in, in some cases you don't have a time depth model, you would like to match everything by yourself using the sonic log. So, so what you do is you uncheck this option and you provide a temporary velocity model, just a, a constant velocity like 3000 meters per second or 2500, any value that fits globally in, for your data set. Okay. At the bottom, you have a very important thing, advanced or optional things. If you are working on a land surveys and, and, and you have, you know that the SRD is, is uh, fixed, so you go and press advanced or optional all things and optional button, and there you are going to define the seismic reference datum. For example, if the seismic reference datum is 500 meters upward, then you provide my above mean sea level, so minus 500 and a positive number is downward. In my case, it's offshore seas. There's no SRD, it's zero meters, so I leave it zero. And at the bottom you have, you just need to type in my name. And that's it. You press go. And it is going to give you just uh, an information message which is stating that the well has loaded successfully. Good. Okay. Dismiss. <clears throat> okay. I have loaded a well. I would like to see it. So to see a well, you go to tree scene on the, on the left pane and you right click on it and press load option. Here is my well, webinar well. So this is the well that I have loaded, the green track that you see in the screen. <clears throat> okay, I have loaded uh, one well. You can also load multiple wells in OpenVTech. So it's it's uh, under the same submenu uh, of uh, from survey import wells, a simple multiple well. This dialog. Uh, is used to, to load uh, vertical wells uh, just based on their X and Y files. X and Y so values. So you can just type in a well name, for example, well1 
and you can provide corresponding x and y's and you can type in the all of all of the necessary fields and you can also define SRD here also KB and uh, if you have a file that contains this information you press read file and you select you select the file that's it sometimes you you have a situation uh, to load a well track Uh, so I'm sorry to load uh, uh, load a well with the knowledge of coordinates only you don't have any files so to do that what you just need to do you uncheck this field in the import a uh, well track window you uncheck it and you type in the coordinates and the calibration and total depth manually okay so I have talked about uh, loading a well track so the next thing is to load the other data like uh, logs and markers and then I'm ready to tie a well. To load the other data I'm going to do another procedure here so that you know many many options to do the same thing. So uh, I'm going to well manage it now. The window that I showed to you in, in a presentation that is normally used to load other data sets. So wells, where is my well? My well was webinar underscore well. I select it and at the bottom I, I, I press buttons once. So here uh, at the, in the middle you have first button which is called add well track. If I press it then you see the same track file that I loaded. That's good and uh, then the second button is edit check short data okay this is the check short file that I loaded I, if, if something is, is wrong here then I can remove it and I can manually type in I can also remove these these columns by right clicking and, and removing the, the point and the next thing is ZT button it's actually time depth model button so here is the time depth curve that I loaded Okay, I haven't load. Uh, I did not load any any marker yet. So what I'm going to do is is to load a marker road marker file for this well. I press that button, and I go and I say read new. So I do the same thing. I locate my ASCII file for well markers. Here it is. I would like to see it now. Okay, that's the file. Column one contains mirror depth, and in column two contains the marker name. Okay, I just need to define the format de definition. This time, I don't have any header. I would like to read from row number one. So, format definition defined. Column one is depth, mirror depth. Column two is marker depth. Depth units are meters, so that's good. I press OK. Everything is well defined here, so I press OK. Okay. I'm going um, back now and I have a uh, well marker file. So by default uh, all markers will have a white color. That's the thing I don't like so I would like to change color for some key markers so like that. I just double click in the color field and give them a nice color. There you go. That's it. So markers for this well are also loaded. The last and important thing is uh, to load uh, last file, a last file or an ASCII file. So to do that, I, I should be sure that I have selected the right well. I press import. Input sudo last file or logs, which means sudo means you just have an ASCII file, column sorted, and column and the row one contains the column in name information. You press select and you look at uh, the last file. Hmm. Yeah. I've selected the last file now. I can show you the way the file looks like. This is a typical last version 2 file. 
Okay, so it automatically reads the information and it displays uh, the, the available logs for this uh, uh, for this well. So what do I need? I need sonic log, delta t. I need density log. I probably need also gamma ray and yeah, or sp. And that's it. And I press OK. And so after that, it is going to load uh, the logs. <clears throat> At the bottom, if you have selected a well, you will have its relevant information. This this is very important. You will get, uh, you will see the KB information, and you will see the corresponding. Uh, in lines and crossing position or trace position for, for a well and, and the X and Y's. Okay, this was it about my first demo. My second demo is, uh, is about wavelets. How are you going to create a wavelet or import a wavelet in Open Detect? So let's go back to Open Detect. We have a very nice wavelet manager uh, that you can just go to Survey Manage and here you can see wavelets. And this manager shows you the list of available wavelets in Open Detect Survey, and its corresponding shape. How does it look like? And these buttons are very useful. For example, per wavelet, you can see its amplitude and phase spectrum. Um, what I'm going to do first, uh, I'm going to show you how you can generate a, uh, a theoretical wavelet like Ricker with any peak frequency you just uh, press this generate button and here you have options you use trigger or sync and the central fee frequency just can give a peak frequency name sorry mean frequency name the, the sampling interval for a wavelet the peak amplitude that you want to give and the, just the name and you can here extract uh, a wavelet which is sta a statistical method so in supported in open detect so if I say okay I'm going to use my available seismic data that I loaded and I'm going to extract a statistical wavelet. I have pressed a button just adjacent to area subselection and I'm just going to extract my wavelet just in the neighborhood of my well. Yeah, that's it. And I can also restrict uh, vertical range for wavelet extraction just to get most. Oh, sorry. Uh, here I just type in 500. If I'm going to tie a shallow air interval, so I just type in 500 to 2000. I can give um, a wavelet length of any suitable range. If you want to taper the wavelet, by default it's 20 so you can also put it in here if uh, if uh, you want to extract a zero phase wavelet or not or you can provide any name later on you can also change the phase of the of the wavelet so let's leave everything default here and I type in my name for the wavelet I say webinar wavelet I press go I say because it was already there yes override I don't care. Okay. This has extracted the wavelet and by default it should be selected. Okay, and this looks like this and I can see the corresponding amplitude and amplitude spectrum for this wavelet. If you, um, if you want to modify it, you can also taper it and you can also change its polarity by pressing this button. So everything that you want to do with this wavelet is, is available in the same wavelet manager. So rotate phase, for example. And you can also taper it by pressing this button. 
by applying a frequency tapper like this or you can also define yeah that's it and dismiss okay this uh, second demo is also finished I have uh, loaded a uh, well data I have uh, a wavelet now I'm ready and uh, our next step is uh, to present you how to launch the well to seismic tie window and uh, how to update the existing time depth model how to apply check shot correction to sonic in open detect and how to save the scenes that the synthetic that you prepare and display it so let's go and uh, see the main part of this uh, webinar <coughs> okay uh, the well to seismic type window can be launched directly from uh, the analysis menu tie well to seismic so I'm going to do this thing first from here to show you what further steps or subsequent steps are necessary if you use that the main menu then it you will have to select the well that you want to tie okay and the corresponding C input cube so you, seismic cube is nice that I've selected uh, sonic log so for the selected well it is going to show you the list of available logs so sonic log is the right log which is selected here if you have a velocity log instead of sonic log so you just check this field and select the right velocity log loaded for this well in this well in my case the log that I have selected it's a sonic or slowness log <clears throat> and the second option is density log so you 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 it's right it's the right thing here and at just uh, below the density log field you have use existing time depth model field um, if you have ch this if this field is checked this means that it is going to use the time depth model or the curve or the data that you loaded uh, in the, in the well manager if you uncheck this then it means that it's not going to use the loaded check shot uh, loaded uh, time depth curve but it is going to apply check shot correction on the sonic log and create its own time depth model so in my case I have loaded it so I just leave it at in, in my first example checked I select the wavelet that I selected and that's it if you want to save this setting setting as a default setting so that when if you have 50 or more than 50 wells then you want to repeat this exercise so you can leave a couple of fill fields there so that you, you don't have to fill all of the fields each time so I press go okay this launches uh, the main uh, window and I'm going to increase its size a little bit according to my screen resolution so that you see more okay <clears throat> the red curve on the left most side is a sonic curve the blue curve is uh, is is uh, a density curve in the middle panel you have computed acoustic impedance and the reflectivity which is blue and uh, the acoustic impedance is red on the right most side you have a synthetic panel and adjacent to it you have a seismic trace extracted along the well path okay the first thing that you I would like to do is I would like to see the markers as full name so I can do it by pressing this button marker display properties display them full name display horizon everything should be display full name okay I see the full name sea floor is at shadow level okay that's nice if you want to focus on a, on a zone or an interval and you want to zoom in so what you just need to do you you just check that what is your view mod so this is currently a view mod in which I can click on the synthetic and seismic panel and zoom in the way I'm going to do so I just drag the mouse from top left corner to top or to bottom right and I'm going to zoom this area this zone okay okay I want to pick uh, a peak 
uh, on the synthetic and want to match it. So you see that this file is probably not matching nicely. So I want to match it. So to show you how you are going to do it, you can press this pick mod button where I just prompted, or you can use optionally P button from the keyboard. So if you press P, then this button is pressed, which means that you can pick on seismic or on synthetic or seismic panel. If you are not happy with the pick, you can clear picks or clear last pick. This is the button which is available at the bottom. Yeah. And if you want to pick an exact event like a peak or trough or zero crossing, so you can define that event type at the bottom which is just adjacent to track field. It's like for example I want to pick maxima. So if I'm going to do it again at the same level, it's going to snap that event and pick it at exact to it time level. And for example, if I want to apply a bulk shift, I want to shift this point up till here, then I click on seismic panel also. And you see the green lines are connected now, and this is the amount of shift that is going to be applied. Let's say apply. Yeah. This is a bulk shift. This was a pick adjacent and it's it was an increase in impedance strand which was reflected as peak and its corresponding seismic peak is this one. And if you are not happy with this shift, you can undo any time. And it's going to be, go back with the previous last situation where you were. And it's going to update the display. Sometimes you want to apply stretch or squeeze and you can also do that left and right. And then what is going it's going to do it's going to apply this stretch on on the synthetic so if a light changes here it stretches the same interval that I pick I can undo and similarly I can squeeze synthetic also yeah undo yeah so this has been tied here and this C floor is at right position, that's good, and I say apply changes, and I'm going to apply a stretch in the shallow section, that's okay. Okay. <clears throat> Once you have tied uh, this, uh, this thing using this pick method, method, then what you would like to do is first, you would like to save the timed up model, and that's the thing you can do uh, by pressing the save icon, which is available on uh, in, the, in the toolbar for this window. And if I press save here, it's going to override the existing uh, thing. So I just um, save the synthetic and I press OK. So it's going to save first the synthetic uh, trace now. I'm going to save it as a, as a draw trace. I press go. And now I want to save uh, the, the updated uh, time track model. So that's the thing I do it here, OK or save. This will override your time dot model. It means that I had a time dot model. I want to override it, which was wrong. So I press OK, and then I go back, and it automatically changes your display in the scene. Okay. <clears throat> the second method is uh, to uh, apply check shot correction on your seismic data. And I have loaded a uh, check shot data in, for, in this webinar, so I'm going to use it. I press go. Okay. And the same window is being launched here. I do the same steps. I increase the window size and see small markers full net. And I zoom it a little bit so that you have just a nice view. Okay. So what you see uh, on the leftmost side now, it's a sonic lock with a check shot correction. You see some stair step geometry. And at the bottom uh, left, you see some options. Use check shot correction. It is checked, which means that the sonic lock is already corrected with the check shot. And just below it, display check shot related curves. I just want to show the check shot curve. So the, the green curve is now superimposed on, on uh, the sonic uh, sonic time and you see that uh, the sonic lock is corrected and if you hide it and you display it, I want to see the original sonic so that to be sure if it is applying the check shot correction on the sonic log or not and now you see the original sonic log. 
So once the sonic lock is corrected, so you can automatically uh, do the same apply see if the, if the bulk shift if it is required or if you have to stretch your space. And then you do the same exercise. Dismiss. Okay. <laughs> so I have uh, created a synthetic seismogram previously. I had uh, saved it also. Uh, so the next thing is uh, how I'm going to uh, display the synthetic trace. So there are a couple of displays available, support edit, open detect. So on the left hand side of this uh, displayed uh, Veltran, I would like to display the synthetic trace. I have an option to display it to display it as a seismic trace also. I can repeat it two or two times. I can also overlay it like sixty or eighty percent for example. Yeah. And I can fill it with nice color so that you see the the how good the match between synthetic trace and the seismic trace is. <coughs> Other option is if you want to display it as a log, then you go to style well log and you what you can do you can fill the entire panel with full fan, full panel option and you can fill it with the same color that the seismic color has, seismic display has. And you can create such a such a display also. There are some other options available in the well properties. For example, if the marker size is, is too small, then you can increase the marker name size. And then in, in, in yeah, and in, if the track thick line thickness is too thin, then you can also increase the thickness to well properties. Okay. <clears throat> the next option is that I want to show you is to do automatic matching based upon my horizon interpretation and uh, the well markers. How I'm going to match it? I'm going. To, I have the the two horizons saved, saved like you see here on the top there is one horizon and at the bottom there is also one green horizon so pink horizon at shallow level uh, green horizon at deep level the horizons names are are the key here so i'm going to match them with the same based on the the, the same name so markers name and the horizon names are are the same in my case i right click uh, on the well that uh, i'm going to tie based upon horizons and markers names. Uh, so I select these necessary information in the same manner the way I presented earlier on. I use the same time death model that I just could have used as a, as a corrected time death model. I press go. Okay. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to display the horizons in the scene, uh, in this view. So to read the horizons, you can press this uh, load horizon button, which is available in the toolbar. And you can select the horizons that you are going to use as a, as a tie. Because I have so many horizons here. I select the two horizons. And you see one horizon is here. So this horizon You see this horizon is matching with this horizon and at the bottom I have also this marker is corresponding to this horizon. So I zoom it out again and I show you the regional view. Here you go. And I at the bottom I have an option match markers and horizons. So if you press this button it is going to do an automatic matching and applying certain squeeze based upon two horizons. I pressed it, it asks how do you want to match it, I want to match same name. So I press OK and then in the display you are going to see two green lines. These green lines I will show you the amount of shift that is going to be applied uh, to the synthetic between these two horizons. 
and if I press apply changes button then you see the consequences are squeezed uh, synthetic display There are some other options uh, in the display. You can also change the display properties of a, of, of a log, and you can also display it in as, as, a, as a color display, like this. I'm sorry about that. I think the system. needs uh, to be restarted. I'm I'm going back there. Press go. Okay. I'm back again. Sorry for this uh, inconvenience and um, Okay, and uh, you can also what you can do is you can save a, save the image of your match, and uh, you can save it as an image display, and it you can save it as a, as a either JPG file or several uh, several image formats are supported also as a PDF. And <clears throat> the last thing that I, I would like to present is the is the key thing is um, if you have tied it you would like to QC your tie, how good or bad was that. So to press, uh, you, what you need to do is display additional information and it's going to launch cross-checking parameters dialog. This was the dialog that I presented in the presentation also. Uh, on the rightmost side, what you see a cross-correlation uh, panel and then on the x-axis you see the delay or lag. And on the leftmost side, what you see is the, the wavelet that you use and uh, here you see the cross correlation coefficient uh, value that I just highlighted and in my case it's poor because I was doing so many strange things and if you're not happy with it so what you would like to do is to QC the match between uh, a specific zone that you used in matching so here for example it's 11 percent correlation probably my phase was not good so I can change the phase of the wavelet and I, if if uh, if there is uncertainty in the wavelet, so then I I might want to to change um, the frequency of the wavelet and see whether the correlation coefficient is improved or not. So you can do several things in here to to create a very good synthetic seismogram in Open Detect. And um, yeah, this was uh, all about my demos. And um, at the end, uh, I would like to present uh, what is coming up. There are two things that uh, I'm going to show you. The, the most important thing is that in in, in next uh, few months, probably less than two months, you're going to get uh, a development release that will contain the, the, the view, which is like this. It's for drift curve correction or for the sonic. And uh, so you can uh, edit the, the, the drift curve and manually and you can update uh, the the time depth curve model um, uh, also in, in in the near future you are going to we are we are doing um, instead of zero offset synthetic you would like to create angle dependent on offset synthetics so we are we are for that we are going to use we are actually developing and we are using ray tracing method and uh, this uh, approach will be pre be available for you in the near future like two months time and uh, that's it from my side uh, I'd like to, to thank you all uh, for being present uh, in this webinar and uh, I would like to invite uh, Rene again uh, to, to tell if there are some questions from the users Uh, hello, uh, Farouk and everybody. Thank you uh, for joining us. And Farouk, thank you for a, a wonderful presentation. And actually, we've had a, a very, very active uh, question session going on in the background. Uh, some of the questions have actually been uh, forwarded with their answers to the entire audience to see. And, um, and so we can actually look at, at some of those as well. Um, particularly, we've we've had some questions um, 
regarding uh, even recently the, the stretch and the squeeze that are even dealing with development at some point. So I will let Arno and Bruno unmute themselves if they would like to share some of those insights. And for all of the, uh, the attendees, if you have questions, please feel free to raise your hand or type in the question and we'll send it on uh, to Farouk or to the appropriate panelist. Um, good afternoon, here's uh, Arnold speaking. Um, I would like you just to uh, get an answer on a very quick question, Farouk, if you could show how easy it is to set the polarity of the data uh, when time wires. So you have two options, either you can set the, the polarity by uh, acting on the wavelet or by acting on the seismic volume. The easiest okay. is to go in the wavelet manager. If you want to change the, yeah, I go in here. Because and over there, there is, uh, by selecting the wavelet, there is a quick toggle button that will flip the amplitudes of your wavelet and switch the polarity. I have shown, shown it on the screen. Okay, so, so it's I'm a toggle. If you click two, two times on it, you are back to, to your original wavelet polarity. So it's a very uh, it's a very quick uh, thing to do. Okay. And um, concerning the last question on the stretch and squeeze, um, we um, you are you are allowed to apply stretch and squeeze uh, to the time depth curve, and that will only change the time depth curve. But um, there are some uh, control points of the time depth curves that are always preserved of anything you, you try to do. For instance, all the checkpoint points, uh, all the checkpoint control points are, um, are uh, calibrated, I would say, to 100%, which means that you cannot uh, make a change in your time depth curve that will not honor your check shot relation. And I don't know that is more question from Bruno, how much uh, velocity change is allowed and how much is uh, is not allowed. Um. Well, basically, well, Bruno speaking, um, you can do, I would say, whatever you want with the velocity changes, which means you can, well, it, it's just a calibration algorithm, so you can uh, force to whatever unrealistic velocity change you want. And it's more or less up to the user to decide whether it is realistic or not. Okay, uh, there are a few questions that have come in uh, as anonymous questions. Uh, I'll read the first one aloud. I think I've, I've sent them to you, Farouk, so that you can take a look at them. Uh, but this can also be available to the panelists as well. Uh, the first one, can we create synthetic when we do not have a density curve? Um, <coughs> yeah, so let me, I have a very small question pane and let me increase its size. Okay. Okay, yeah. So if you have, if you don't have a density curve, then what you can do is to create a fake density curve in OpenDetect. So in the well file management, you have an option create to create any log. So you go in here and you create, uh, use any equation to predict, uh, for example, empirical relationship to predict uh, density from sonic or a constant density of 2.4 and I can call it a density log and I can give it a right unit and I press go, then what it is going to do is going to okay, so from 0 to 6000 meters steps of 0 0.15 and then it is going to create this density log. So you can use this density log to create your synthetic seismogram. If you have an equation though, so you can use that equation also the same method. 
Okay, and uh, the next question is uh, the re about the reflectivity scale, uh, asking why it is negative to the right by default. So I guess they're also wondering if there's a way that you can change that. Uh, you mean uh, in the display, can we change uh, the lock uh, style or um, its layout? Uh, well, the question specifically reads, uh, why the computed reflectivity scale is negative to the right by default. So it's probably a two-part question. Uh, if you, if well, the asker can elaborate on that, um, please send in more details if, you, if that is not what you are intending. You cannot actually change the display properties, and but by default, it's uh, it's it's true that we are displaying it opposite line. Let me see. Okay. Okay. This reflectivity. Yeah. So it's it's fluid. So I think it's it's a thing for Bruno to change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It might be something we want to change. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for reporting. Yep. Oh wow! We're now reporting bugs in our webinar. Wonderful. <laughs> it's how we improve things. I guess not not quite a bug, but a, a feature yeah. we'd like to uh, to add. Okay. Um, well, I don't particularly have any, any new questions coming through, so if you would like to type in a question or raise your hand, uh, please do so. Oh, okay, we actually, now we do. Uh, does flipping the polarity on the wavelet also flip it in the seismic data? Um, no, it does, it does not. If you are flipping the polarity of the wavelet, that will affect your synthetic curve that you see in this panel, but it will not affect your seismic panel. Um, if you want to change the uh, priority of your seismic data set, then you have to uh, use a mathematics attribute to change it. And uh, if you open the default attribute set that we provide that is called evaluate attributes, then you actually get an equation that can uh, apply any phase rotation to your seismic data set. So a uh, full polarity reversal would be 180 degrees, but with the attribute called phase rotation, you can apply any other uh, angle rotation to your seismic data set this time. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, now, one other question we have is, is it possible to do synthetic seismograms if you have depth cube um, and not as in time as in right now? So can you do this with the depth? Currently, all the functionalities of the synthetic to seismic tie module are, uh, are hidden in the depth surveys. Uh, even uh, even though uh, it is for now hidden, what you have, what you can do, you can convert all your depth data into time in order to create a time survey from your depth data set. Okay. Because uh, time wells is something that you really need to do in, uh, in the time domain. And for instance, in depth survey, if you look at the well manager, you have no utility to load a check, any check shot data or time depth model. So you must be in a time survey and you have the tools to go to create your time survey if you only have depth data. Okay, well, uh, thank you everybody. Uh, if you have any more questions, please send them in or raise your hand. I'll, I'll give you a, a little bit longer for that. Otherwise, if you have questions, you can always email us and we can, ask, we can answer your questions afterwards. So you can email us at uh, webinar at dgbes.com uh, and, and then we can send it on to, to the presenter or to anybody else. Uh, that can answer your questions. So thank you all for participating in this in this webinar, for sending your questions in, and please do join us next month for our next webinar. We'll send out the, the information and the links on that uh, later this week. 
Now, for those of you who this is your first webinar, you probably don't realize that we do offer all of our webinars online as recordings uh, within a few days of the actual live webinar. So this webinar recording will be available uh, by Friday this week, and we will send out the link via email. And as soon as it's posted, we will uh, make a note of that on our LinkedIn page and on our Facebook page, so you can actually uh, keep an eye on those and you'll be the first to know if you are uh, members of those pages on there. So please join us next month for our webinar and thank you all of, all of our attendees and our panelists and our presenter. So thank you and have a great week.